All right, so today we're gonna re-clock the distributor one notch to the left um, to uh, get this thing realigned. So after I did the vacuum advance um, and did the tuning, um, the distributor ended up, you know, a little out of whack, um, like the guy said it would. Um, so he advises re-clocking it, so we're gonna attempt that. Never done that. Um, you can pretty much tell right away, your low tension wire lead right here, um, it should be pointing towards the block, uh, basically 90 degrees to the block. So this, this should be here. So right away you can see it's, and when, when we're all done, this should be pretty close to 90 degrees and then you'll know it's in the right spot. And then I'll be able to get this hooked back up, maybe even replaced with a new one I have. Um, and then uh, I should be able to get that working again on my dash, which would be nice. And, um, I'm not sure how important it is to set it on top dead center for this exercise, but I just did a quickie top dead center. I verified the, took one um, spark plug out, verified the, uh, I can see with a flashlight that the piston's at the top. I verified that these valves are rocking a little bit. I got a whole video on top dead center if you want to check it out. And then these two in the end are tight. And, um, and then of course this is pointing towards the number one wire, going to the number one spark plug. So I'm at top dead center right now. We're pretty close to it. Next up is we're gonna take out the, take the distributor off. Um, which shouldn't be too hard to do. What you do is you remove the, the bolt that's on the back. right here and you leave this little the adjusting one alone and that and that should do it um, I got a couple wires I need to disconnect and of course make sure your battery terminal is is off and uh, you should be uh, good to go to extract this thing and set it set it set it to this to the side get my Vacuum off here. There we go. There she is. Next step is we're gonna remove these two nuts here. We gotta withdraw this pedestal. Um, it's probably not gonna be easy to come off, but we'll, we'll see. Um, very important that there are shims underneath this pedestal that properly gets the distributor exactly where it needs to be. You do not want to mess with those shims. You want to leave them right alone, right where right. they're at. So the two nuts and lock washers are off, probably about a half inch, I think. Um, now we got to get this broken loose, probably stuck on with paint and grime in old age. Uh, I'm going to figure that out next. Right. That broke, I, I just took a whole a punch and a hammer. And I, I lightly, lightly just kind of tapped it. I give it a little nudge that way, and it, anyways, it, it popped loose. There we go. Very nice. Of course, a real quick cleaning and a shot of some uh, engine enamel to spruce this piece up a little bit. I know this drive gear is in perfect alignment. It's exactly where it's supposed to be on a stock TR6, but our goal here is to withdraw this up, turn it counterclockwise one notch, and drop it back down. So we got a couple things to prep for before we do that. All right, so there's two things I want you to prepare for. One is, you can see, by marked one tooth, so I, so I can put it knew exactly where it was as a reference point. And that I'm using just a, a simple um, squeeze action white marker, which works good. The other thing that you want to do is you want to take a measurement of this distance here. So you, you know when you pop it back down, it's it's seated all the way. Because it's got to get past the gear to connect it to the oil pump. And if the oil pump's connected, it's going to be a little tricky. Anyways, I just took a an old ruler stick I had and, and marked a piece of blue tape at the top. So I know if I am uh, hit the top of that blue tape that uh, I've got it seated back in the original height. So I've gotten the, the wheels off the ground 
and I've put it in fourth gear. So I, uh, I suspect I'm gonna need to jog the wheels a bit to get this uh, oil pump to realign up. But the idea here is that um, we are going to um, pick this tooth up and move it counterclockwise one notch. And you just have to pick it up just enough. You don't have to remove it. Pick up just enough to clear the, that, that those teeth in the back there that you see and then drop it back down. But again, it may not, it probably won't seep back down. We'll probably have to jog the wheel, uh, the rear right tire a little bit in fourth gear to get that this going. This is why you mark it. See, I have just a simple magnet here. When you pull this thing up, um, can you see it? It's starting to move, to, see that? It's wanting to move because of the gear that's, that's in. And uh, so it's gonna throw your orientation off, which is why you put that white paint on there. That way you, you'll know if you've moved it a, a notch or not. Now let's see here. This one's pretty loose. There we go. I'm not sure what to do now. Maybe, right? I'm gonna have to see, see if it's set up, get it settled in the gear to see if it moves over. I put a second little dot here so I knew where the next tooth would be. And it's off by one right now. It's no big deal. I just need to take a quick measurement. Yeah, it's definitely not seated down. So it may be in the right spot. I just need to get it to, to sit down. Um, it's definitely off by like a quarter of an inch. I just need to get it uh, past that gear for the uh, uh, oil pump at the bottom. Well, I, I think it's okay. I ended up ended up just pulling on the fan like like this. I did one one complete revolution. Check sure check to make sure the valves are loose again. I can see the piston at the top, and everything is kind of. Uh, you know, it's right at the, uh, the height of my blue tape, dead on. So it dropped, it dropped down. And then my second dot, kind of hard to see from this angle, but second dot, it's right above the, the old dot I put on. So it is, it is exactly one notch over right now. So it should be it. Just a matter of uh, putting it back together and testing it. I noticed my uh, pedestal did not have any gasket, shimming gaskets underneath it, which is fine, doesn't have to have it, but you want to make sure, I have this thing just temporarily installed in these finger tight right now. You wanna make sure that, when, hear that? You wanna make sure you got a little bit of float in there. It's better to have it a little loose and a little tight, but you wanna make sure that that bottom of this pedestal is not touching the gear. Here's the .005 requirement. Um, the washer thing is kind of tricky to do. I think it's a little overrated, but you can fit a regular feeler gauge down in there. And um, there, it's in. You can make sure you've got, you know, that minimum 005 down there um, pretty, pretty easily. And again, stick your finger in there. It, it should feel loose when this pedestal is, is, is down. And uh, if you've got that clicking sound that's moving a little bit, you're probably in pretty good shape. Uh, and uh, so mine's gonna go back together without any shimming gaskets uh, purchased. All right. Put a little non-hardening gasket sealer on, on it. I don't think it needs it, but put a little bit on there and I'll put it back in the same spot I found it. There we go. A little printed flange there is at the bottom. There we go. I just got to your torque wrench, tighten those to 20 foot pounds. So there's trivers in place, but I'm gonna have to turn this rotor just a little bit. There it goes. That till I feel it drop into the little slot. And now I, now you can tell it's in the slot because it's not moving. Put your little bolt back in here and tighten her down by hand. Um now you notice this thing is then you want to loosen up that your adjusting bolt right there. So you should be able to move this now. 
And the idea is that, I don't know where it's going to end up, the idea is you're probably going to end up closer um, to like this. Where this is, I'm gonna, this is where I'm going to start. And you see, this is basically 90 degrees to the block. And then this is pretty close to pointing at what used to be the old number one spot. And now this thing here is lined up like it should be. Not doesn't have a bad kink in it anymore. I leave that disconnected though. So this is where I'm gonna uh, start her up and see how it goes. Okay. So vacuum line is hooked back up. Cap is hooked up. This nut is loose, so I can move this a little bit. Added my electronic condition back up. Put my number one spark plug back in. And I just gotta tighten this, turn the battery back on. Hopefully you had the battery off for this whole uh, exercise. And then, uh, let's see if we can't, let's see if this thing will start. <laughs> I believe it's firing on all six cylinders. It's getting a little late, but um, I gotta, I'm gonna let it warm up and then I will um, reset the timing on it and um, take her for test drive. But uh, that seems to be a successful operation. And then I'm gonna work on getting my new tap cable on next, because that one's original and it's, it's, it sticks a lot.